While there are so many contestants who deserve the Hell's Kitchen platform, there are those who had no business being anywhere near it. Don't get fucking upset with me in my fucking kitchen. You're finished. These contestants really make you wonder how they even made it to the show. But even taking that as a given, you gotta wonder how they managed to survive elimination time and time again. Well, at least that's what I think about this chef. You, you wanna pick on me? Pick on me! I don't give a shit! He blamed the customer when she got sick after tasting his dish and then talked back to Chef Ramsay. You know all this big fat mouth of yours? It's getting you nowhere. I'm just trying to do the job. Yeah. My advice to you, just shut your mouth. If you ask me, I think Andrew was a way better competitor during the finale on Ralph's Brigade than his entire journey on the show. Do you agree? Anyway, when he kicked things off as the first contestant during the signature dish challenge, I thought we had a winner here. He proudly served up his creation, Andrew's absolute penne. However, Chef Ramsay's response was far from flattering. That is absolute dog shit. And then the famous chef had Andrew taste his own dish. He admitted that it needed a bit of salt, but nothing else. And that was enough for Chef Ramsay to dismiss his 10 years of experience as a chef as a waste. Could you use some salt? And how long have you been cooking? About 10 years. What a waste of 10 years. Get back in fucking line. If someone I admired told me that I wasted an entire decade pursuing what I thought was my passion, I'd crumble right then and there. So I guess props to Andrew for holding it together. Anyway, he found himself at the meat station alongside Mary Ellen in the second service. Let's take this out. No, it has to cook. He wants medium rare. I don't want to overcook this one. When she brought undercooked Wellingtons to the pass, he didn't shy away from letting her have it. Mary Ellen, however, was less than impressed with his condescending attitude. Uh, I wish you'd listen to me. No, but I just want to get it right. As the service progressed, Mary Ellen managed to redeem herself. Seizing the opportunity to shine, he attempted to portray himself in a favorable light. And that was by taking credits and claiming that he had control over the oven's temperature. Unfortunately for him, sous chef Scott wasn't buying it. I ended up taking over a lot more control of what she wasn't able to do. It's not what I saw. No wonder he earned a nickname The Politician. Later, in the fourth dinner service, he found himself stationed at the Garnish Station. Ramsay, perhaps sensing the need for mental preparation, advised him to run through the garnish pairings at the start of the service. My one goal for the evening is keeping my mouth shut. Yes, chef. No, chef. Thank you, chef. Here you go, chef, on the window. Finally, some self-awareness. However, when it came to performing, Andrew's memory failed him. Hello. Yes, chef. Yes, you. Fish is not even cooked yet, so I don't know what you're doing. Oh, young man. Chef, I'm listening. Yeah, young man. He really couldn't recall which garnish went with each dish. So you could only guess how mixed up and messy everything looked when it got to the pass. Are you okay, Andrew? Yes, I am. Right, I'm talking to you. You're sending me the wrong garnish, yes? Uh, yes. Chef Ramsay's patience was being put to the test, and he decided to do a do-over. As if that weren't enough, Andrew repeated the mistake by forgetting the end dives later on. When questioned by Chef Ramsay about their whereabouts, Andrew's silence prompted Ramsay to explain the situation to Jean-Philippe. And this led to a table restart for the blue team. I was late on the garnish, we're redoing the whole the order. Yeah, table 26, yes, apologize. The consequences of Andrew's lapses of judgment were significant. The blue team lost the service, they didn't even finish unlike the red team. But in spite of everything that I've mentioned so far, Andrew chose to deflect the blame onto Mary Ellen instead of reflecting on his own performance. Mary Ellen was, sorry baby, lack of a better term, a disaster tonight. Some say that he's overhated. As for me, I feel like he gets as much hate as he deserves. And I didn't even mention the fact that he tried to slack off during a punishment by trying to cheat his way out. Speaking of being delusional, My signature dish is going to knock his socks off. He's gonna declare me the winner right then and there. And yeah, this guy was always flustered. Just his aura is very nerve-wracking and I'm anxious. Got it, confidence, confidence. Petrified. But hey, at least he was great meme material, right? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, speaking of his journey on the show, during the signature dish challenge, the spotlight fell on Don as the first contestant from the blue team to face Chef Ramsay's judgment. This is one, yes, big motherfucking portion. <laughs> yes, yeah. everything's bigger in Texas, especially right. the portion. Brimming with confidence, he presented his creation, a southwestern Celtan Boca, hoping to make an impression. But did he? <coughs> Taste the spice on that? Well, Chef Ramsay was concerned enough to decide to involve Robin. Chef Ramsay asked how much cumin Don decided to use, to which he responded with half a teaspoon. 
Not convinced, the famous chef turned to Robin, suggesting she spit out her butt. And believe me, she didn't need to be told twice. The consensus was that the spice was overpowering, in no small part due to the cumin, leading to Don losing the round to Robin. And that's not too much for you. Mm -mm. The spices are so powerful. The blue team ultimately fell short in the challenge, with a final score of 3-5, to five, resulting in a loss. As a consequence, they were tasked with the punishment of cleaning up both kitchens. Now, he was on the meat station during his first service. While he didn't attract much attention that night, his team perceived him as somewhat detached. He contributed very little and seemingly wandered around lost in his own little world. It's safe to say that the blue team didn't pull off a win here. Don's uh, living in his own world. He was not knowing what the fuck to do with himself. During the deliberations, Clemenza, considering the overall weakest performance, put Don's name forward. He cited his perceived lack of contribution that night, an observation that Brian concurred with. I had him picked from the beginning as one of the weakest links, and you should not be here. I'm with Tavon and Don too. In his defense, Don argued that he had been given no opportunity to make an impact during the chaotic service. Tavon then stepped in to support Don's plea. So based on performance alone, I, I don't think that Don should still go up. To be completely honest, if Tavon is supporting you, you really are in the weeds, my man. And then, in the second service, Don took charge of the pizza station. Initially, his pace was leisurely, drawing attention to the point that he found Chef Ramsay intimidating. Stop slowing down. Don't finger the pizza! The man is intimidating. I'm waiting on the pizza! However, his efforts didn't translate well on the plate. Cause, in the end, he served a pizza that managed the rare feat of being burnt on the top and raw on the bottom. Chef Ramsay, bewildered by this anomaly, questioned how such a mishap occurred and showcased the questionable dish to the rest of the team. Look, look, hey, hello, raw and burnt. Donald. Yes, sir. We can't go down on a pizza, let's go. Yes, chef. I mean, Patrick was right. Anyway, in the next service, Don found himself in an unexpected role, the waitstaff. But things were off to a really bad start as he struggled to spell the word appetizer. A P P E T R S D E R S. <laughs> James's look was hilarious. When he eventually sent the order to the pass, Chef Ramsay sarcastically congratulated Don. Congratulations, you've just gone past sixth grade. Thank Moving on, he found himself manning the meat station again alongside Royce. He struggled to determine which pan the Wellingtons belonged to. Wellington goes in a fancy pan. Right. Come on, Donald! Surprisingly, Don's Wellingtons on the subsequent order, despite Royce's concerns, were perfect. Lucky break, I guess? But then his steak ended up raw. Wait, he needs more time. He just cut a raw sirloin. Sirloin needs to cook. It's raw. However, Don defiantly sent the raw steak up. And he practically signed his own death warrant with that little stunt. Not, not, not pink like it should be. Roll. Sorry, chef. Feeling the pressure and perhaps a touch of fear, Don incessantly called out one minute on the refire. It's very frazzling in that situation in there. How would I put it? Shit in yourself. I got one minute. Chef Ramsay pointed out that Don had been repeating the same time frame for the past three minutes. Yeah, three minutes ago, you said yes, one right. minute. Yeah, I'm right yeah. there. One minute. What's going on? When the refire finally arrived, the steaks were medium well. So, Chef Ramsay finally came to the conclusion that the best place for Don that night was nowhere near the kitchen. I come back four minutes later and it's still one minute. Get out! Back in the dorms, Don argued that he was dealing with a lot of chaos while also being unfairly targeted by Chef Ramsay all the while. Chef, there's a lot of fucking shit going on in the kitchen. And he's sitting there chastising my fucking ass. What a damn baby. Clemenza leveled the accusation at Don, claiming that he was lost that night. Don, however, countered, asserting that his struggle was confined to one aspect, the fish station. In his opinion, this contributed to the team's overall difficulties. You couldn't handle it. Well, the only thing that I fucked up was one New York. That's it. Nevertheless, others on the team, including Patrick and Guy, also considered Don a potential nominee. In the end, Don found himself in the hot seat as the men's first nominee for elimination, alongside Brian as the second. The duo joined Roshni and Danielle from the red team. During his plea to Chef Ramsay, Don expressed his confidence in his abilities and insisted that he had much to offer the team. However, Chef Ramsay questioned why he was nominated in the first place. Don perceived it as an attempt by the team to step up, but Ramsay saw it as an indication that the team wanted Don out of their way instead. Ultimately, Don was eliminated. Well, better late than never that they kicked the guy off. I just don't get it. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Good night. In his exit interview, Don revealed that he initially hoped for Chef Ramsay's approval of his culinary skills, but sadly, things didn't go his way. I thought that I would be able to come out here and, you know, that he would just love my food. I thought I was more of a perfectionist um, than I was. Okay, so now it's time for Danielle from season 11. This looks like fucking T-Rex chew on it. <laughs> Danielle, you know how expensive lamb is? This bitch done fucked up three racks of lamb. How the hell you do that? She was clueless, full stop. In the signature dish challenge showdown, she took the lead for the red team facing off against Barrett. She presented a parmesan crusted chicken breast with grilled asparagus. Chef Ramsay, though, wasn't exactly impressed. He pointed out that the asparagus was burnt and promptly thrashed the dish. The chicken did not escape criticism either. Color underneath and that color on top. What happens in Vegas should stay in Vegas, right? And what happened in that kitchen, quite honestly, should have stayed in that kitchen. I'm unimpressed. That's creative. Anyway, it was clear from her very first dinner service itself that she was way out of her depth. As the red team delved into preparing their entrees, she was completely lost, struggling to recall what was needed for the tickets. I don't understand how you're expected to remember all the tickets. Then Danielle confessed to Susan that she had never worked in a brigade before. This revelation raised some eyebrows, considering that, you know, that's the entire point of the show. Like, did she not do her research? It was season 11. I cannot believe that Danielle is a head chef. A head chef of what, a hot dog stand? <laughs> exactly. Caught in the moment, she instinctively grabbed the ticket and started reading it, questioning whether it was one that Chef Ramsay had just called. Where's your ticket that I've just called? Let's walk three steps together. Yes, sir. And it's that you're making such hard work out of nothing. Three steps, first ticket, second ticket. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, no sir. fuck off. Taking the lesson in stride, Danielle returned to her station. However, the kitchen woes persisted as the black kale went missing. Chef Ramsay did his best to get to the bottom of it, but both Danielle and Susan remained tight-lipped. Eventually, though, Danielle cracked, blaming her unfamiliarity with the process. I'm trying. I've never fucking done this before. We're missing a fucking kale. Danielle! It absolutely will yes, be chef. one minute, Chef! Chef Ramsay directed her to stop staring at him and focus on her tasks. Despite this advice, confusion crept in when Ramsay reminded her about a ticket. Uncertain whether he wanted to refire alongside the next ticket, she found herself in a big dilemma. I'm confused. Do you need the one for the redo, the two chicken and two Wellington? Or do you just need the two chicken and two Wellington? Get out! This confusion proved really costly, as it led to Danielle becoming the third person from the red team to be ousted from the kitchen. Danielle, in an attempt to seek some solace, asked others who were kicked out if they had ever worked in a true brigade before. The response probably left her feeling a little bit embarrassed. None of us have ever fucking worked in this kitchen before. Guys, how many people have worked in a true brigade before? Really, what was she expecting? Next service, Danielle truly found herself in a challenging spot, juggling three risottos. But Susan had her back. Despite the help though, the risotto that made its way to the pass got rejected because it was practically drowning in booze. Have you got a drinking problem? No, chef. Uh, it was not a very sensitive question, but then again, it's Chef Ramsay. Seeking further assistance, she enlisted Janelle's help, eventually managing to send out appetizers to the dining room. The pattern of requiring constant aid painted Danielle as a liability in the kitchen, relying on her teammates to navigate the challenges successfully. She wasn't someone the team could rely on at all. The following day during prep, Danielle found herself in a perplexing situation. She finally admitted that she was lost and hesitant to speak up for fear of being wrong. Amanda, recognizing the importance of communication, urged her to speak up. Speak up, girl. That's all. That's it. However, when the dinner service rolled around, challenges persisted. Placed at the meat station with Jacqueline, Danielle faced a daunting task. As the red team transitioned to the entrees, she sent out the Wellingtons that Chef Ramsay promptly deemed as overcooked. And we all know how much Chef Ramsay loves overcooked Wellingtons. They've flown on a private jet, they've been on a fucking mega super yacht, and they think they're King Dick. Touch that. It's overcooked, Chef. Danielle disappeared to her station and returned with another tray of Wellingtons, only to face Chef Ramsay's growing annoyance as they were, once again, overcooked. Medium, Chef. Touch that one. Overcooked, Chef. Over. Following the loss of the dinner service, the red team faced the inevitable task of nominating two members for elimination. 
During the deliberation, Danielle found herself in the crosshairs as Susan and Cindy brought up her overcooked Wellingtons incident. Janelle, who was truly disappointed with Danielle's performance, felt that she didn't step up as expected. In a turn of emotions, Danielle was enraged by the consideration, believing she was more vocal than they were giving her credit for. This is a new fucking environment for me. I have to learn it. And I think it's unfair to fucking throw me under the bus. However, in her frustration, she seemed to forget that the challenging kitchen environment was new for everyone. So, in the elimination round, Danielle got the first spot on the red team's list, Jessica snagged the second, and Jacqueline joined in eventually. When Danielle had her moment to plead her case, My performance here in Three Nights of Service does not describe my ability as a chef. I'm a damn good chef, and I know that. That was a ridiculous excuse. She threw in a reminder that her first three services weren't doing justice to her skills, claiming that she was a pretty good chef. But in the end, the decision came down and she got the boot for not showing improvement in three services. Danielle looked like a deer in the headlights, and that's why she ended up as dead meat. Yeah, I can't say that was the wrong choice. Next up is hand model slash food blogger Matthew from season 20. Matthew, at Signature Dish, you delivered me a dish full of Matthew faced the judgment seat as the second guy from the blue team competing against Keanu in the Signature Dish Challenge. So you just come in like that all day long, yeah? But whoops-a-daisy, the shrimp's poop sack was still hanging out. I'm a big lover of shrimp, okay. but I'm not very good at eating shrimp and the sack. Chef Ramsay questioned why Matthew hadn't caught that detail during the cleaning process. Like, deveining shrimps is one of the most basic skills you can learn. So I'd say the famous chef was fair and playfully offering him a taste of the sack. I know you're now legal to drink, but were you actually drunk when you put this dish together? No, sir. During the alcohol challenge, though, Matthew aimed for redemption, creating a bourbon rub chicken with cream sauce. Motivated to bounce back from a setback in the signature dish challenge, he felt confident that he had shown through this time. As the blue team deliberated on the top three dishes, Jay commended Matthew's creation, acknowledging its well-executed nature. This positive reception earned Matthew a spot in the blue team's top three, with Chef Ramsay yet to pass judgment on his dish. Presenting his bourbon-glazed airline chicken breast, Matthew received initial praise for its rustic presentation. But the best presentation in the world couldn't save him from the fact that the chicken was raw. Oopsie! This revelation frustrated the famous chef, especially considering that it made its way into the top three. You guys wanted me to eat pink chicken? Seriously? And this is your top dish. Get back in line. It was just never-ending blunders for this guy. He didn't have a single redeeming moment. During the 300th dinner service, Matthew found himself stationed at the meat station alongside Peyton. He was fully aware that this was his last chance to prove himself in Chef Ramsay's kitchen. As the entrees commenced in both kitchens, Matthew walked up to the lamb thinking it would be his moment to shine. However, Ramsay took the lamb to the end of the line for everyone to feel. Jump in someone without even looking slicing, just touch that. Yeah, it's not just rare, but raw. What didn't sit well with Chef Ramsay was his seemingly casual demeanor, especially given the high-profile guest, Mike Tyson. Chef Ramsay promptly ordered the men to get their act together. I mean, seriously? Yes, Who chef. cooked that lamb? Me, Chef. Come on, come on! Feeling the weight of potentially dragging the team down, Peyton assumed control of the meat station. As the VIP order approached, both him and Peyton found themselves blanking on what was ordered. The famous chef could not fathom how they could forget the order and insisted they apologize to Tyson, causing embarrassment for Peyton. Can you apologize, please? Yes, Hurry up, let's go! In a desperate attempt to ensure the chicken was cooked properly, he pulled out a meat thermometer that I guess he smuggled in somehow? Anyway, this move raised some eyebrows, with Trenton expressing disbelief that he'd go to that extent in a professional kitchen. When Chef Ramsay saw the time for the order, chaos ensued as Peyton and he provided conflicting timings. Matthew attributed the chaos to the team going too fast, but Chef Ramsay wasn't buying it. He directed the men to call out the order multiple times, and dissatisfied, ushered them into the pantry for a meeting. Matthew, what's going on? It's just really fast, and we're trying... And really getting... fast? Yes. Call out the order again. One salmon, one chicken, two lamb. Despite returning to the kitchen, the blue team faced expulsion, which is not too much of a surprise considering how the situation was deteriorating. During the debrief downstairs, Chef Ramsay revealed Matthew's abandoned meat thermometer. I found this. In the end, as the first nominee for elimination, Matthew, alongside Peyton and Jay, faced Chef Ramsay's scrutiny. 
The famous chef did not mince words, reminding Matthew of the unclean shrimp in the signature dish challenge, the raw chicken in the alcohol challenge, and the unfortunate raw lamb incident during the dinner service. Ultimately, the thermometer was just the excuse he needed to send him packing. Young man, if you're gonna stay in this industry, get your together. But at least he returned his thermometer, right? And the next time you decide to cook protein, use it properly. Good night. Brutal. And now time for another marvel. Well, not exactly. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Three threes are six. You can't even count to nine. You scare me. Gail was right. In her first service, Melissa sent up raw pizzas and continued her downward spiral. In the second one, Melissa found herself stationed at the garnish station. She sent mashed potatoes to the pass, which were not only cold and runny, but they weren't even needed for the current orders. Runny mash? Yes, yeah, chef. Yeah. Hey, hold on, hold on. One, they're stone cold, and secondly, we don't even need them. The mix-up became apparent, prompting Chef Ramsay to take action. One salmon, one halibut, one chicken, one beef. Where's the Wellington? It's not in the window, chef. It's right there. It's on the next table. Yes, chef. In a response to the error, he decided to demote Melissa for the remainder of the service. Her new role? Assistant maitre de replacing Jillian. Swap places with Jillian. Now fuck off! Yes, chef. Oh, he was done with her. On the fish station during the third service, her Dover sole came out overcooked, leading to one of Chef Ramsay's most iconic insults. Look at that. Overcooked on the bottom, crispy as fuck, and it looks like Gandhi's flip-flop. Yes, thank you so much for giving us these moments. Then, in the Italian night dinner service, Melissa took charge of the appetizer station. Initially, she faced the realization that she had forgotten a second order of ravioli, causing a stall in the service. I put the ravioli! No, right now, chef! When she eventually brought up the overlooked order, it turned out to be undercooked. Touch that! You're just rushing out and you're just treating me like a fucking idiot! Then came the most embarrassing one. 30 minutes into the fifth service, she presented cooked filet mignons, but Chef Ramsay's anger flared. The red team had only managed to serve three tables of appetizers, and entrees were not even on the horizon. We sent three tables of appetizers, and you're sticking all the beef in the oven! In frustration, Chef Ramsay questioned if she wanted to go home and proceeded to count the cooked beef on the tray. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god! To the absolute shock of her teammates, a whopping 23 fillets were cooked, all deemed overcooked and unusable for the rest of the night. There's 23 on board, Chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? The unnecessary waste of food, specifically overcooking a significant number of fillets, highlighted the critical lapse in judgment and execution. I can't do it anymore with you. There's no system! I can't keep on telling you every f***ing service! Later, when Melissa sliced the beef that turned out to be raw, Chef Ramsay's dismay intensified. This prompted him to instruct her to refrain from slicing beef if it wasn't cooked properly. I think Chef Ramsay's warnings had no effect on her and she should have been ejected that night. Because the following service, she ruined 7 pounds of scallops in total, and the blue team was forced to change the scallop salad for a rock shrimp one because of her blunder. I cooked the shit out of all the scallops. I fucked the team, chef. What the fuck are we doing? Now, come on. Let me know in the comments if you think she was worse than Raj in Season 8. So, who would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments section down below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, you can stay up to date with my latest content by visiting my social media pages. And yes, I've got an even more exciting video for you right here, so don't forget to check it out.